General Principles of Pharmacology. How does drug act? Nowadays it has been possible to understand the mechanism of action of many drugs. Some drugs act by interacting with their specific receptors. Some drugs produce their effects by modifying the ion channels. Several drugs produce their response by interacting with enzymes or carrier proteins. In addition, some drugs act simply by physical or chemical reactions. Receptors The receptor is the component of the cell to which a ligand specifically binds and may produce responses. For example, acetylcholine specifically binds with cholinergic receptor but not with histamine receptor. Some drugs also bind with plasma proteins or erythrocytes. But these binding are nonspecific and are not related to the receptor. The concept of the receptor was originally coined independently by the experimental work of P. Ehrlich, a German physician, biologist, chemist, and J. N. Langley, an English physiologist, in the latter part of the 19th and early part of the 20th centuries. Their experiments showed that nicotine, an alkaloid obtained from tobacco, caused the contraction of skeletal muscle. South American aero poison curare inhibited nicotine-induced contraction of skeletal muscle. But the response of that muscle to direct electrical stimulation was not blocked. The response to nicotine persisted even after denervation of the muscle. From this initial experiment, they concluded that nicotine and curare acted on the same component of the cell. Subsequently, it had been possible to identify several receptors and their specific antagonists. Isolation of receptors with their subunits and determination of molecular weight has greatly enriched this field. Most of the receptors are located at the plasma membrane. But receptors for steroid hormones, thyroid hormones, or vitamin D are located within the seal. At the synapse, receptors are located both on presynaptic and postsynaptic sites. Presynaptic receptors are called autoreceptors. The function of autoreceptors is to regulate the synthesis and release of neurotransmitters, alpha-2 adrenergic receptors, M2 receptors, and H3 receptors are examples of autoreceptors. After identification of opioid receptors to which morphine and related drugs act, the investigators tried to find out the endogenous substances that usually acted on those receptors. Subsequently, in 1975, the existence of endogenous peptides such as met encephalin, lu encephalin, dynorphin had been established that acted on opioid receptors. The term orphan receptor has been applied for which no functional ligand is identified. Several diseases develop due to abnormalities in the receptor. For example, an autoimmune attack on the nicotinic cholinergic receptor causes myasthenia gravis. Inherited mutation of ACTH receptor leads to the development of resistance to ACTH. A mutation in the alpha-4 subunit causes a form of congenital epilepsy, and mice with their beta-2 subunits, knocked out, exhibit altered learning behavior. Classification of receptors Receptors can be classified into four types based on the mechanism of action. These are ion-channel-coupled receptors, G-protein-coupled receptors, 
tyrosine kinase-related receptors, and DNA-linked receptors. Ion channel coupled receptors. There are some receptors, for example, nicotinic cholinergic receptor, GABAA receptor, glycine receptor, 5HT3 receptor, and P2X receptor, that act by opening the ion channels. This type of receptor is present at the outer surface of the plasma membrane. Among receptors, the molecular structure of the nicotinic cholinergic receptor has been extensively studied. It is due to the availability of a source of receptors in high density and abundance. E. Electric organs of the fish torpedo and electrophorus, and highly selective markers, for example, alpha bungarotoxin, cobra alpha toxin, for the receptor. The number of nicotinic cholinergic receptors in the torpedo electric organ is 1,000 times more than that present in skeletal muscle. Nicotinic cholinergic receptor in skeletal muscle is a pentamer of four distinct subunits alpha-2, beta, gamma, delta. It has a molecular weight of about 280 kilodalton. The subunits are arranged around a funnel-shaped central cavity with the largest portion of the receptor being exposed towards the extracellular space. The central cavity is believed to be the ion channel, with a diameter of about 6.5 angstrom. The open channel is selective for cations, but carboxy terminus and long amino terminus are located extracellularly. The amino termini of the two alpha subunits are believed to contain the acetylcholine binding site. G protein coupled receptors. The binding of this type of receptor leads to the involvement of G proteins. The G protein coupled receptors include muscarinic cholinergic receptor, adrenergic receptor, dopamine receptor, 5-HT receptor, opioid receptor, and receptors for many peptides. Among these receptors, beta-adrenergic receptor has been first fully characterized. Beta-adrenergic receptor possesses seven transmembrane alpha helices with both the extracellular amino terminus and the intracellular carboxy terminus vary greatly in length. Another highly variable region is the long third cytoplasmic loop that couples to the G protein. Deletion or modification of this section causes the receptor to bind with the agonist but cannot associate with G protein. The ligand binding domain appears to present within the membrane on one or more of the alpha helical segments, but not on the extracellular amino terminus. Tyrosine kinase-linked membrane receptors The tyrosine kinase-linked membrane receptors are the receptors for insulin, insulin-like growth factor 1, epidermal growth factor, and platelet-derived growth factor. These receptors produce their responses either rapidly, for example, metabolic response within a few minutes, or slowly, for example, regulation of DNA synthesis after many hours. The tyrosine kinase-linked receptors are present at the plasma membrane and have two functional domains, an extracellular ligand binding domain, which is enriched in cysteine residues, and a cytoplasmic domain, which possesses the tyrosine kinase activity as well as the sites of autophosphorylation. The extracellular part of insulin or insulin-like growth factor 1 contains two dissimilar chains, A and P, while the epidermal growth factor contains a single polypeptide. The tyrosine kinase domain of these receptors is similar. DNA-linked receptors DNA-linked receptors are intracellular receptors and are soluble proteins. Retinoic acid, corticosteroids, thyroid hormones, and vitamin D act by binding with these types of receptors. These receptors are composed of a ligand-binding domain and a DNA-binding domain in its middle part. 
The structure of the DNA binding domain involves the coordination of a zinc atom by four cysteine residues which together form a structure called a zinc finger. The fingers are believed to wrap around the DNA helix. Agonist first enters the cell and binds with a cytoplasmic receptor, which is normally associated with two molecules of 90 kilodalton heat shock protein, HSP90. The agonist displaces HSP90 and the agonist receptor complex then translocates to the nucleus. Within the nucleus, the agonist receptor complex can recognize specific base sequences and activate specific genes. Individual receptor with subtyping Nowadays it is apparent that heterogeneity of individual receptor occurs almost without exception. The existence of subtypes of different receptors is rev. yield by the pharmacological study as well as molecular cloning of receptors. In the pharmacological study, the subtypes of receptors are done using their specific antagonists. For example, acetylcholine causes the contraction of both skeletal and smooth muscles. This acetylcholine-induced contraction of skeletal muscle is blocked by plus tubocurarine whereas atropine has no effect. On the other hand, acetylcholine-induced contraction of smooth muscle is blocked by atropine, not by plus tubocurarine. Rapid advances in the cloning of complementary DNAs that encode various receptors also helped in the subtyping of receptors. Cholinergic receptors Parasympathomimetic effects of the body are mediated by the action of released acetylcholine on cholinergic receptors. Cholinergic receptors are of two types, muscarinic cholinergic receptor and nicotinic cholinergic receptor. Subtypes of cholinergic receptors were named after the alkaloids originally used in their identification. For example, the word muscarine was derived from the poisonous mushroom and nicotine from tobacco. Acetylcholine has a unique property to bind with both muscarinic and nicotinic cholinergic receptors. In the case of bovine adrenal chromaffin cells, the plasma membrane contains both types of cholinergic receptors. It is the concentration of acetylcholine that will select which type of cholinergic receptors will be stimulated. Using isolated adrenal chromaffin cells, it has been observed that acetylcholine stimulates the muscarinic cholinergic receptors at concentrations less than 1 micromolar. At this concentration of acetylcholine, nicotinic cholinergic receptors are not stimulated. But nicotinic cholinergic receptors are stimulated when the concentration of acetylcholine is more than 1 micromolar. Muscarinic cholinergic receptors, parenzepine, a muscarinic cholinergic receptor antagonist, blocks gastric acid secretion at a concentration that does not affect several other responses to a muscarinic agonist. Based on this unique observation, muscarinic cholinoceptors can be further subdivided into three types M1, M2, and M3. M1 receptors are present in neurons and gastric parietal cells. The selective agonist is MCNA343. Activation of this receptor causes increased PI turnover leading to increased formation of IP3 and diacylglycerol. Thus, there is an increased formation of intracellular free calcium concentration. 
The response of muscarinic agonist on this receptor can be blocked by both pyrenzepine and atropine. M2 receptors are present in the cardiac and smooth muscles. The response of muscarinic agonist on the receptor is blocked by atropine. Activation of this type of receptor causes inhibition of adenyl cyclase leading to reduced intracellular cyclic AMPM3 receptors are present in the exocrine gland, smooth muscle, and vascular endothelium. It acts by the same mechanism as M1 receptor. DNA cloning of muscarinic receptor leads to the identification of two more receptors M4 and M5. Their antagonists have not yet been identified. Nicotinic cholinergic receptors. Nicotinic cholinergic receptors present in skeletal muscle and ganglia are different. They can be expressed as NM and NN. NM receptors are present in skeletal muscle whereas NN receptors are present in neurons. Acetylcholine, nicotine, carbacol, and dimethyl-4-phenylpiperazinium, DMPP, are the agonists for the nicotinic cholinergic receptor. Tubocurarine and galamine are the antagonists for NM receptors. Hexamethonium, C6, is the antagonist for NN receptors. When acetylcholine acts on the postsynaptic nicotinic cholinergic receptor, there is a transient increase in permeability to sodium and potassium ions. This results in a net inward current carried mainly by sodium ions, which depolarizes Th. E cell and generates an action potential. Subsequently, there is an increased influx of calcium leading to increased intracellular free calcium concentration. Ganglionic transmission in many cases is thought to be mediated by acetylcholine receptors containing alpha-3 subunit in combination with beta-4, beta-5, and sometimes beta-2 subunits. Some acetylcholine receptors containing alpha-2, alpha-3, alpha-5, and alpha-6 subunits are also found in the brain. Adrenergic receptors Adrenergic receptors are of two broad subtypes alpha and beta. Alpha adrenergic receptors are further subdivided into alpha-1, alpha-1a and alpha-1b, and alpha-2, alpha-2a and alpha-2b, adrenergic receptors. Beta adrenergic receptors are further subdivided into beta-1, beta-2, and beta-3 adrenergic receptors. Phenylephrine is the alpha adrenergic receptor agonist and prazosin is the alpha adrenergic receptor receptor's antagonist. Clonidine and euhimbine are the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor agonist and antagonist respectively. Beta-1 adrenergic receptors are present in the cardiac muscle whereas beta-2 adrenergic receptors are found in smooth muscle and most other sites. Beta-3 adrenergic receptors are present in the adipose tissue. Dobutamine is the selective agonist of beta-1 adrenergic receptors whereas practolol, metoprolol are the antagonists for beta-1 adrenergic receptors. Salbutamol and butoxamine are the agonist and antagonist of beta-2 adrenergic receptors. Histamine receptors Histamine receptors are of three types H1, H2 and H3 receptors. Bronchial smooth muscles contain H1 receptor. Stimulation of this type of receptor causes contraction of the bronchial smooth muscles. The specific agonists for H1 receptor are 2-thiazolethylamine and 2-methylhistamine. Activation of H1 receptor leads to increased formation of IP3 and diacylglycerol. Thus, intracellular calcium concentration will be increased.
H1 receptor antagonists are meparamine, diphenhydramine, and promethazine. H2 receptors are present on the parietal cells of the stomach. Activation of this receptor increases the secretion of acid from parietal cells. Dimaprit and 4-methylhistamine are the selective agonists for H1 receptors. Activation of H2 receptors causes an increase in intracellular cyclic AMP level by stimulating adenylate cyclase. H2 receptor antagonists are cimetidine, ranitidine, famotidine, and nizatidine. H3 receptors appear to exist only in the CNS. At the histaminergic neuron, H3 receptor may regulate the synthesis and release of histamine. This H3 receptor would be analogous to other autoreceptors. H3 receptor agonist and antagonist are amethylhistamine and theoparamide respectively. Impramidine is the most potent H2 receptor agonist but is also a very potent antagonist of H3 receptor. <music> dopamine receptors There are at least five dopamine receptors, D1, D5, and these may be further divided into two subfamilies whose properties resemble the original D and D2 receptors defined biochemically. The two subfamilies are often termed D1-like, D1, D5, and D2-like, D2, D3, D4. D1 receptor is present in the striatum and nucleus accumbens. D2 receptor is present in the pituitary mammotrophs. D1 receptor is associated with the stimulation of adenylate cyclase activity. Activation of D2 receptor causes inhibition of adenylate cyclase. The D1 receptor is about 15-fold more sensitive to dopamine than D2 receptor. SKF 38393 is an example of AD1 receptor agonist and SCH 23390 is AD receptor antagonist. Apomorphine is the D2 receptor agonist. Buterophenone, pimazide, and sulpiride are the D2 receptor antagonists. Analysis of the amino acid sequences of the dopamine receptor subtypes has shown that significant homologies exist, with the greatest homologies being Fu. ND between members of the two subfamilies. Each receptor has been shown to contain seven stretches of amino acids that are hydrophobic and long enough to span the membrane. It seems, therefore, that each of the dopamine receptor conforms to the general structural model for a G-protein coupled receptor with an extracellular amino terminus and seven putative membranes spanning a helices linked by intracellular and extracellular protein loops. One or more potential sites for glycosylation are found on the amino terminus and the second extracellular loop. The helices are bundled together in the membrane to form the ligand binding site and there is an intracellular carboxyl terminus probably bearing a palmitoyl residue which may form a further link to the membrane. The D1-like receptors have short third intracellular loops and long carboxyl terminal tails whereas the D2-like receptors have long third intracellular loops and short carboxyl terminal tails. This provides a structural basis for the division of the receptors into two subfamilies but is also likely to have a functional significance possibly related to the specificity of receptor G-protein interaction. Indeed, the third intracellular loop of these receptors is thought to be important for the interaction of the receptor and G-protein, and for the D2-like receptors variants of these subtypes exist based on this loop. For example, there are short and long variants of the D and D3 receptors with the long forms having an insertion, 29 amino acids for D2 long, in this loop. For the D4 receptor, there are polymorphic variants in the human population with different length insertions in this loop. 
5 hydroxytryptamine receptors 5 hydroxytryptamine 5 HT receptors are of four types minus 5 HT1 5 HT2 5 HT3 and 5 HT4 5 HT1 and 5 HT2 receptors are further subdivided into A B and C subtypes Type 1 2 and 4 are G coupled receptors Type 3 is a ligand-gated cation channel. These receptors are present in the CNS and vascular smooth muscle. Specific agonists for 5-HT receptor are sumatriptan and buspirone. Spipirone, methiothiopin, and kepazine are the 5-HT receptor antagonists. Methysergide, catanserin, and cyproheptidine are examples of 5-HT receptor antagonists. The specific agonist for the 5-HT3 receptor is 2-methyl-5-HT. Ondansetron and tropocitron are the 5-HT3 receptor antagonists. Metoclopramide is the specific agonist for the 5-HT4 receptor. Opioid receptors Morphine and related drugs produce their responses by acting on their specific receptors termed opioid receptors. There are three well-defined or classical subtypes of opioid receptors pi, kappa, and delta. More recently, cDNA encoding an orphan receptor was identified which has a high degree of homology to the classical opioid receptors. On structural grounds, this receptor is an opioid receptor and has been named ORL, opioid receptor-like. All of the opioid receptors possess the same general structure of an extracellular N-terminal region, seven transmembrane domains, and intracellular C-terminal tail structure. Different agonists act on different subtypes of the receptor. For example, morphine predominantly acts on pi and kappa receptors. Encephalins mainly bind with delta receptors but have a weak affinity to pi receptors. Dynorphin preferentially binds with kappa receptors. <music> GABA receptors are of two types GABA A and GABA B. Both types of receptors are present in the CNS. However, the concentration of GABA receptors is more than that of GABA B receptors. GABA receptors are widely distributed in the granular cell layers of the cerebellum and are directly associated with a chloride channel, pore size tilde 5A. The concentration of GABA B receptor in the interpeduncular nucleus is far greater than the concentration of GABA receptors and it appears to be linked to calcium and potassium channels via GTP binding proteins. GABA receptors appear to exist as pentamers of three distinct subunits in the arrangement alpha M beta N gamma. The beta subunit appears to have the recognition capacity for GABA and related agonists. GABA receptor agonists are GABA, Mishimal, and isoguvacine. GABA B receptor agonists are GABA and baclofen. GABA receptor antagonists are bicuculin and picrotoxin. GABA B receptor antagonist is faclofen. Recently a third type of GABA receptor, named GABA-C is reported to be distributed in the mammalian CNS which has a central chloride pore and is insensitive to both bicuculin and baclofen. GABA-C receptors are composed of P-subunits. Cis-4-aminocrotonic acid, CACA, is the selective agonist for GABA-C receptor. Binding assay The first step in the direct characterization of a receptor is to set up an assay for specific binding. This can be done either by an agonist or an antagonist since both bind specifically to the receptor. 
The receptor must be tagged in some way, most often radioisotopic labeling, that readily permits quantitation. This allows the definition of affinity, receptor distribution at the tissue and subcellular level, by cell fractionation techniques, and receptor dynamic regulation, for example, receptor internalization. Receptor autoradiography is a specialized example of receptor localization by binding assay. It may also permit recognition of receptor subtypes by the differential affinity of particular ligands for different receptor preparations. Biochemical characterization Receptor subunit composition may be determined by covalent incorporation of ligand, by photoaffinity or crosslinking techniques, and analysis of polyacrylamide gels. Receptor purification involves standard methods of protein fractionation. Membrane-bound receptors must first be solubilized with appropriate detergents, as well as specialized methods such as ligand affinity chromatography. Receptor purification may allow amino acid sequencing and immunization with purified protein to produce specific antibodies. Amino acid sequence data permits the generation of peptide antibodies and oligodeoxynucleotides for cDNA cloning. Immunochemical characterization Here, an antibody against a receptor is useful for many types of studies including immunohistochemistry, immunoblots, and definition of receptor topography, for example, intracellular versus extracellular domains. The antibody may also be used in the expression cloning of CDNAs. Methods of stubbing receptors The concept of the receptor is not a hypothetical one. It has been possible to study the receptors by a binding assay, b biochemical characterization, c immunological characterization and d molecular biological characterization. Molecular biological characterization Screening with antibodies may permit the cloning of CDN as encoding receptors. Cloning of receptor CDN as and genes immediately provides a wealth of data including the primary structure. Number of receptors it has been possible to count the number of receptors per cell. The number of receptors in different tissues varies. The neuromuscular junction in skeletal muscle contains a high density of nicotine. Nic cholinergic receptors, 10,000 per square micrometer. There are about 85,000 beta adrenergic receptors per cell in dog ventricular muscle. Erythrocyte contains only 40 insulin receptors whereas hepatocyte contains about 300,000 insulin receptors per cell. Hemoglobin synthesizing reticulocytes have approximately 300,000 transferrin receptors on the cell surface. The density of acetylcholine receptors increases after chronic exposure to nicotine but is decreased in patients with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. Receptor regulation Receptors are dynamic rather than static entities. Receptor number and affinity can both be altered by a variety of mechanisms. A major factor regulating receptor function is exposure to the agonist. Prolonged removal of agonist, as in denervation or prolonged treatment with antagonist, can lead to receptor supersensitivity. Prolonged exposure to agonists may lead to desensitization, for example, Reduced response despite continued exposure to the bioactive agonist. 
desensitization has been divided into homologous and heterologous types. In the homologous type, the reduced response is evident only for a specific receptor that has been exposed to an agonist. In the heterologous type, the response is reduced in receptors for other agonists. Life cycle of receptor Receptor synthesis occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum and then passes through the Golgi system. Golgi vesicles containing receptors fuse with the plasma membrane, thereby inserting the receptor into the mobile lipid domain of the cell surface. The fate of a receptor after exposure to an agonist is only known to some of the receptors like transferrin, peptide hormones, insulin. There is receptor-mediated endocytosis. When an agonist binds to the receptor, the receptor becomes clustered in specialized depressions in the cell membrane called coated pits. The inner membrane surface of the coated pit has an electron-dense coating made up of a protein called clathrin that is detectable by an electron microscope. These coated pits, half-life of about one minute, are then pinched off from the cell surface to form coated vesicles. Coated vesicles are then uncoated by shed off their clathrin coats which is due to the effect of the clathrin depolymerizing enzyme. Then they fuse to form larger vesicles called endosomes, receptosomes. Endosomes or uncoated vesicles, average diameter of 0.5 picometer, and maintain a pH of 5.5 within it by an ATP-dependent proton pump. Some endosomes are recycled for cell surface receptor after fusion with the Golgi system and others are degraded in the lysosome. For example, LDL receptor can go through 150 such cycles without losing its function. Transferrin receptor and iron are recycled. On the contrary, both epidermal growth factor and its receptor are degraded within the acidic endosome. Binding forces in the drug receptor interaction frequencies of association and dissociation between the drug and receptor depends on the a affinity between drug and receptor. B types of chemical bond formation between drug and receptor, C, some receptors, and D, concentration of drug in the biophase. Affinity of the receptor for drug The receptor has the affinity to bind with its specific drug. The affinity may vary. For example, Insulin receptor has both high and low affinity binding sites. The affinity for a specific drug is increased if the receptors are empty, for example, when there is no drug bound to the receptor. When partially occupied by the drug, the affinity of the receptor for that drug will be reduced. The affinity of the receptor for the drug depends on the surrounding pH and the concentration of electrolytes. The insulin receptors are sensitive to changes in the surrounding pH. For example, a decrease in the pH of the ext. Recellular fluid from 7.4 to 7.0 which is commonly observed in diabetic ketoacidosis, causes 50% decrease in the binding of insulin to its receptor. Chemical bonds The force that attracts the drug to its receptor and holds it in combination with the receptor long enough to initiate the chain of events leading to the effect is termed chemical bond. A chemical bond holds two atoms, groups of atoms, or molecules together with sufficient stability that the combination may be considered an independent molecular species.
Chemical bonds are of four types hydrogen bond, ionic bond, covalent bond, and van der Waals force. In most interactions between drugs and receptors, bonds of multiple types are likely important. Hydrogen bond The hydrogen bond is formed between a hydrogen atom covalently to an electronegative donor atom, for example, N, 0, F, South, Cl bridge. Flydrogen atom consists of a single, negatively charged electron, and a nucleus with a single positively charged proton. When hydrogen is covalently bonded with oxygen, for example in the case of O group, it shares its electron with the oxygen atom. Almost completely deprived of its electron, the hydrogen atom is then reduced to a positively charged nucleus. Thus, the O group becomes polarized, with the hydrogen atom expressing a positive charge and the oxygen atom a negative charge. The polarized group becomes close to another oxygen atom or to nitrogen, a hydrogen acceptor. The positive portion of the hydrogen atom will be attracted to the negative atom and a hydrogen bond will be formed between the two atoms. For example, hydrogen bonds can occur in the following combinations. H O O N N H O, where H indicates bond. The formation of such a bond is relatively stable having a strength of 2 to 5 kcal per mole. Ionic bond the electrostatic attraction that occurs between oppositely charged ions causes the formation of an ionic bond. Here an atom donates one or more electrons from its outer shell to the outer shell of another atom or atoms. At physiological pH, most receptors have some ionizable groups such as hydroxyl, carboxyl that interact with an ionizable drug. An individual ionic bond is relatively stronger and the force needed to split an ionic bond is higher. Such bonds can dissociate, ionize, in water. Covalent bond When a drug and its specific receptor share a pair of electrons rather than a donation of an electron from one atom to another, there is the formation of a strong and stable bond. Covalent bonds are much stronger, about 20 times, than ionic bonds. The strength of this bond is about 100 kcal per mole. The covalent bond is irreversible at body temperature and sufficient energy or an enzyme is necessary to break the bond. Antibiotics and antineoplastic drugs produce covalent bonds with their specific receptors. Van der Waals force. It is the weakest bond having the strength of 0.5 kcal per mole and forms only when two molecules are very close together. The formation of this type of bond occurs when an electrostatic attraction between any two neutral atoms nearby. This attraction is induced when the respective electron clouds surrounding each nucleus are slightly distorted. An example may be cited to clarify the picture of different bonds. The nitrogen of acetylcholine has a strong positive charge which is acquired by donating its unshared pair of electrons to carbon to form a coordinate covalent bond. When an acetylcholine molecule comes in contact with its specific receptor, the positively charged nitrogen atom shows an ionic bond with the negatively charged group of the receptor. This electrostatic attraction may be sufficient to draw acetylcholine close T. O the receptor. 
but the stability of the bond is conceived of as being increased by van der Waal's force, produced by the close fit of two of the CH3 groups into the cavity. The formation of a hydrogen bond with oxygen may draw the other end of the molecule close to the receptor and thus further increase the stability as well as specificity of the entire acetylcholine receptor combination. Life cycle of membrane receptor the loss in response has been most commonly termed desensitization. When this loss in response is very rapid, then it is termed tachyphylaxis. Nicotinic cholinergic receptor undergoes very rapid desensitization, within one second, whereas G-protein or tyrosine-coupled receptor desensitizes over many seconds to minutes or even hours. G protein. Some receptors in the plasma membrane regulate distinct effector proteins through the mediation of a group of GTP, guanosine triphosphate, binding proteins known as G proteins. The activity of this regulatory protein depends on the presence of GTP and magnesium. G protein acts as an intermediate between receptor and enzyme, and effector. G protein is located on the inner surface of the plasma membrane. It has subunits designated as alpha, beta, and gamma. The G proteins have three domains. Guanine nucleotide binding domain, domain for interaction with the receptor, and effector. <music> Varieties of G protein. There are several types of G proteins Gs, GI, GO, GQ, GT and GOLF. These varieties are based on the identity of the distinct subunit. Gs, S for stimulatory, stimulates adenyl cyclase after being activated by an agonist. The same G protein also activates the calcium channel. GI, I for inhibitory inhibits the adenyl cyclase activities and activates the potassium channel. GO inhibits calcium channel whereas GQ activates phospholipase CGT designating transducin, mediates rhodopsin activation of cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase. Several G proteins may be present in a single cell. Each of these may respond to several different receptors and regulate several different effectors. One receptor can also regulate more than one G protein. Activation, inactivation cycle In the resting, inactive, state of G protein, GDP, guanosine diphosphate, is tightly bound to the alpha subunit. But when an agonist is bound to G-protein coupled receptor, then the GDP bound to the alpha subunit will be displaced by GTP. This alpha GTP is then dissociated from the beta and gamma subunits and subsequently interacts with the membrane-bound effector. The GT-PACE activity of the alpha subunit increases on binding, leading to hydrolysis of the bound GTP to GDP which allows the alpha subunit to recombine with the beta-gamma complex. Second messenger When the first messenger binds with its specific receptor, the drug receptor complex is formed which subsequently causes the synthesis and release of another intracellular regulatory molecule termed the second messenger. These are adenosine 3, 5 feet monophosphate, cyclic AMP, calcium, guanosine 3, 5, monophosphate, cyclic GMP, inositol 1, 4, 5 triphosphate, IP3, diacylglycerol, DAG, and calmodulin, CAM. Cyclic AMP 
the first recognized second messenger cyclic AMP is synthesized by the plasma membrane attached enzyme adenyl cyclase in response to activation of many receptors such as beta adrenergic receptors. The function of activated adenyl cyclase is to convert ATP into cyclic AMP binding of the agonist to alpha adrenergic receptors. M2 receptors lead to inhibition of cyclic AMP formation within the cell. Normally cyclic AMP is hydrolyzed within the cell by an enzyme phosphodiesterase which is inhibited by drugs like caffeine, theophylline. So, there is increased intracellular concentration O. F cyclic AMP following treatment of cells with these drugs. Adenyl cyclase can also be activated directly, bypassing the receptor, by some drugs like forskolin and fluoride ions. Cyclic AMP acts exclusively through cyclic AMP-dependent protein kinase, a kinase, to phosphorylate enzymes and proteins involved in cell function. A kinase is composed of two regulatory, R, and two catalytic, C, subunits. When cyclic AMP binds to the regulatory subunits, there is the dissociation of the regulatory subunits with resultant activation of the catalytic subunits. There is the transfer of phosphate, phosphorylation, from ATP to various cellular proteins. Cyclic AMP mediates the responses such as the rate and contraction force of heart muscle, the relaxation of smooth muscle, the breakdown of carbohydrates in the liver, the breakdown of triglycerides in fat cells, calcium homeostasis and many other endocrines and neural processes. Calcium Intracellular calcium plays an important role in the function of most cells. Intracellular calcium is present in both free and bound forms. It is the free form that is responsible for the cell function. There is a great variation in the concentration of free calcium in the extra and intracellular compartment. Recently, great achievement has been obtained to measure intracellular free calcium concentration before during, and after stimulation by a drug in the intact cell using the fluorescent dye Quin-2 or Fura-2. The concentration of free calcium outside the cell is in the millimolar range whereas, in the resting state, the intracellular free calcium concentration is around 100 nanomolar. For example, its concentration is 10,000 times less in the intracellular compartment. When the cells are stimulated by a full agonist, intracellular free calcium concentration increases rapidly. For example, the concentration of free calcium will be increased from 100 nanomolar to about 500 nanomolar. This increased free calcium concentration is responsible for the effect. The bound form of calcium is present in a millimolar concentration in the inner face of the plasma membrane, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, and secretory granules. Cyclic GMP The second messenger cyclic GMP is produced from the GTP by an enzyme guanylyl cyclase which is present in the inner phase of the plasma membrane. The guanylyl cyclase is activated when the muscarinic receptor is occupied by its agonist. This cyclic GMP then activates the intracellular cyclic GMP-dependent protein kinase, G kinase. The subsequent G kinase-mediated effect is not yet known. IP3 Recently IP has been well accepted as a second messenger. It is the hydrolytic product of phosphatidylinositol, PI. PI is the minor phospholipid of the cell membrane. Phosphorylation of PI causes the formation of phosphatidylinositol monophosphate, PIP, which is later converted to PIP2. The activation of enzyme phospholipase C, a membrane-bound enzyme, causes the hydrolysis of phosphatidylinositol 4,5-biphosphate, PEP2, 
and there is the formation of water-soluble inositol 1,4,5 phosphate, IP3, and DAG. This IP3 is released into the cytoplasm and stimulates the release of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum. So, IP3 increases the intracellular free calcium concentration which is ultimately involved in producing the effect. This IP3 is then dephosphorylated to inositol 1,4-phosphate, IP2, inositol 1-phosphate, IP, inositol, and finally to PI. The antipsychotic drug lithium causes depletion of membrane PI and accumulation of intracellular IP by inhibiting the hydrolysis of IP to inositol. Diacylglycerol Another second messenger DAG is produced in the cell membrane from the metabolic product of PIP2. This DG activates directly the intracellularly located protein kinase C, C kinase. DAG is. DAG is phosphorylated to form phosphatidic acid coupled with IP to form PI. Calmodulin. Calmodulin. CAM is a single peptide chain containing 148 amino acid residues and is considered as the receptor for intracellular free calcium. It has four binding sites. Three or four of these need to be occupied by calcium before CAM will activate myosin light chain kinase, MLCK. One molecule of calcium CAM interacts with one of MLCK and without this interaction MLCK is inactive. While phosphorylated, Myosin forms cross bridges with actin, and sliding of actin over myosin filaments occurs. This sliding effect produces contraction of the muscle. Intrinsic activity Once a drug binds with its specific receptor, it may produce a response or not. D plus RDR response, no response. So, what is the intrinsic activity? A single drug receptor complex can evoke a response. Based on this criterion, the drug is termed full agonist, partial agonist, inverse agonist, and antagonist. The antagonist does not produce any response. So, it has an intrinsic activity of zero. The intrinsic activity of a full agonist is one. Thus, the intrinsic activity of a partial agonist is between zero and one. What will be the intrinsic activity of inverse agonist? It is minus one. Full agonist. The drug that combines with its specific receptor and may evoke responses is termed full agonist. Morphine is an example of a full agonist. It binds with its opioid receptors and causes analgesia, respiratory depression, euphoria, pupillary dilatation, and so on. Partial agonist The drug that combines with its specific receptor and evokes weak responses and also prevents a full agonist from acting on that receptor, is termed a partial agonist. Individually it acts as a weak agonist but in presence of a potent agonist, it will act as an antagonist. Nilorphine has morphine-like activity and is also effective against morphine. So, 
Nilorphine is considered a partial agonist. Pindolol, oxprenolol, and acibutolol are examples of partial agonists. <music>
The cationic residues are postulated to be paired with anionic sites which may reside on nearby transmembrane helices, SIS3 or S5 or S6. A change in transmembrane voltage may then cause the S4 helix to twist upward which results in the net movement of a positive charge from the intracellular region to the extracellular region. This could be responsible for the gating current observed before the current flow through the ion pore. Presumably, the movement of the S4 helix is then coupled to the movement of residues which allow the opening of the ion pore. Sodium channel The voltage-sensitive sodium channel plays a critical role in the initiation of the action potential. Activation of the channel results from abrupt changes in membrane potential, and channel opening allows for the inward movement of sodium from the extracellular compartment. The permeability to sodium rapidly rises and then slowly declines even when the potential is maintained. The voltage-sensitive sodium channel has been purified, a mass of about 300 kilodalton. It has three subunits alpha, beta-1, and beta-2. Alpha subunit is large and has a molecular weight of 260 kilodalton. On the other hand, the beta subunit has a molecular weight of about 33 and 36 kilodalton. The alpha subunit is heavily glycosylated and contains four repeating domains forming a central transmembrane pore. Neuronal, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle sodium channels differ slightly in structure and protein composition. The activation of these channels can be blocked by the toxins like saxitoxin, tetradoxin, and scorpion alpha toxin. On the contrary, botrachotoxin and veritridine stimulate the influx of sodium. Tetradoxin can block neuronal and skeletal muscle sodium channels at concentrations as low as 10 nanomolar, but the concentration required to block cardiac muscle sodium channels is 100 times higher. Local anesthetics and antirhythmic drugs, class 1, act by interacting with the sodium channels. But the site of action of local anesthetic is different from the site of action of tetradoxin. Calcium channel Calcium channels of the plasma membrane are of two types receptor-operated CH. Anels and voltage-sensitive calcium channels. The influx of calcium through the receptor-operated channel is directly coupled to the occupation of a receptor. NMDA receptor appears to involve this type of calcium channel. Voltage-sensitive calcium channels open and allow the entry of calcium when there is rapid depolarization of the cell membrane. The channel is made up of four or five subunits. The AL subunit, A, B, C, D, E, G, H, or I, controls the selectivity of the conductance pore for calcium entry, the voltage sensor, and the gating mechanism. There are three distinct types of voltage-sensitive calcium channels L also known as alpha-1c, n, also known as alpha-1b, and t, also known as alpha-1g, alpha-1h. L-type channel is long opening, high conductance and is activated at minus 30 to plus 2 ohm millivolt. This type of calcium channel is found in the heart, cardiac conducting tissue, and vascular smooth muscle. First-generation L-type calcium channel antagonists nifedipine, verapamil, and diltiazem are from three distinct classes and cause vasodilatation, slowing of cardiac conduction, and negative ionotropic effect. Second- and third-generation L-channel antagonists, such as nemodipine, nicardipine, philodipine, and amlodipine have more effect on vascular dilatation than on myocardial contractility or cardiac conduction.
N-type calcium channel is responsible for the calcium entry that triggers neurotransmitter release. Here, the calcium conductance is medium and is found in neuronal tissue. N-type calcium channel antagonists include co-conotoxin GVIA, MVIIA, and CVID. T-channel has low calcium conductance and is rapidly repolarized. They are opened at low, minus 80 to minus 30 millivolt membrane potential. This type of channel is found in the brain, neuronal, and cardiovascular tissues. Selective T-type calcium channel antagonist is Meb Fridil. Potassium channel. There are a variety of potassium channels and their conductances are regulated by membrane potential, receptor ligands, intracellular calcium, and ATP. ATP-sensitive potassium channels are opened when the intracellular ATP concentration is decreased. Sulfonylureas act by modulating the potassium channels. Block of potassium channel by sulfonylurea causes the beta cells of the pancreas to depolarize, thus stimulating insulin secretion. The vasodilator effect of chromocalin in smooth muscle is due to the opening of the potassium channel leading to hyperpolarization of the cell. X-ray analysis with data to 3.2 angstroms reveals that four identical subunits create an inverted TP, or cone, cradling the selectivity filter of the pore in its outer end. The narrow selectivity filter is only 12 angstroms long, whereas the remainder of the pore is wider and lined with hydrophobic amino acids. A large water-filled cavity and helix dipoles are positioned to overcome the electrostatic destabilization of an ion in the pore at the center of the bilayer. Main chain carbonyl oxygen atoms from the potassium channel signature sequence line the selectivity filter which is held open by structural constraints to coordinate potassium ions but not smaller sodium ions. The selectivity filter contains two potassium ions about 7.5 angstroms apart. This configuration promotes ion conduction by exploiting electrostatic repulsive forces to overcome attractive forces between potassium ions and the selectivity filter. The architecture of the pore establishes the physical principles underlying selective potassium conduction. Chloride channel Most benzodiazepines act to facilitate the opening of the channel by GABA. Adenyl cyclase Adenyl cyclase activity is increased by binding of specific agonists to adrenoceptors, beta-1 and beta-2, A2 adenosine, D1, 5-HT1A, E1, E2, and I2 receptors. On the other hand, there are some receptors like alpha-1 adrenoceptors, A1 adenosine, D2, 5-HT1A, muscarinic cholinoceptor, and opioid receptors involved in the inhibition of adenyl cyclase. Guanyl cyclase Guanosine 3 feet 5, cyclic monophosphate, cyclic GMP, is a purine nucleotide, which is synthesized by the enzyme guanyl, guanylate, cyclase. It is metabolized by one or more phosphodiesterases. Cyclic GMP can regulate a variety of responses, including vasodilatation, intestinal secretion, and retinal phototransduction. Some receptors appear to be linked to the stimulation of glunyl cyclase. 
These include receptor for atrial natriuretic factor, receptors involved in fertilization in some species, receptors that mediate the response of cells to agents such as the organic and inorganic nitrate vasodilators. Some receptors may indirectly or secondarily promote the formation of CGMP as a consequence of increases in intracellular free calcium or the generation of fatty acids and other lipid breakdown products. Guanylyl cyclase is a glycoprotein, molecular weight of about 130 to 160 kilodalton located both in the membrane and in the cytoplasm. Enzymes Some drugs act by inhibiting enzymes. Sulfonamides inhibit dihydrofolate synthesis by competitive inhibition of the incorporation of para-aminobenzoic acid. Neostigmine acts by inhibiting acetylcholinesterase. Aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase. Omeprazole inhibits gastric acid secretion by blocking the enzyme potassium, hydrogen ATPase. Others Certain drugs act by physical or chemical interaction. For example, water-soluble cathartic like magnesium sulfate is completely retained within the gastrointestinal tract after oral administration and creates a solution much more concentrated than the normal body fluid and increases the total bulk of the feces.